How are you? How are you doing? The positional specific videos have proven very popular on YouTube in particular. And this week, we've looked at the hooking role. Been really interested in many of your comments pertaining to the hooker. Some of you are saying they shouldn't be called the hooker anymore because of the change of role, that they're not hooking for the ball and they should be called the dummy half. I challenge that a little bit because in theory, everybody can go to dummy half. So based on that theory that I'm putting forward there, I'm now going to do an analysis on hookers and I've pulled a few different things together today, including pictures, as in still pictures. I'm going to look at everything leading up to and the past because in commentary, you don't often hear about those things, do you? You tend to hear about what they do with the ball or whether they run with the ball, whatever it may be. So please let me share the screen and you will get some idea about what I'm talking about. Hopefully here you can see a still of Isaac Luke. Now, one of the reasons I've pulled this still out is that I want you to look at how square his eyes are, how square his shoulders are. Admittedly, he's away from the squat position now, he's almost stood up. But in a post this week, I asked what does a hooker have in common with a cricket batsman? And I'll, I'll unravel that now while we talk. So have a look at Isaac Luke's eyes there. Have a look at this fella's eyes. He's actually standing out. look like he's in a horror movie, actually. But even though he's crouched down, his head is still relatively straight. That aids the direction of the ball, right? Because if your head leans, and I think very soon you'll see a bit of someone doing that, then it can affect the pass. Here's Danny Badira. There's not been many better hookers than Danny over the time as well. What's also interesting from this still is the way he is gripping the ball. Now, you'll see that this hand here, the right hand, is the guiding hand, whereas this left hand, or the right as we look at it, is the power hand. I would argue that this was probably going to be a spin pass because this inside hand just plays a supporting role, making sure the ball doesn't fall, whereas the power comes from this one. But look at his squatted position, and his head is still relatively straight. And if we compare that to the next clip of who I think is Billy Walters, He's actually in a little bit of trouble there because his head's pointing down. The way he's gripping the ball, he's gripping it with his palms and he's also holding the ball quite a bit higher on his right hand too. So I dare say his pass around about this time when this picture was taken, and this is not saying he's not got better at it, but it could be a little bit consistent at times. And here's what I was saying with regards to the cricket batsman and the and the... And the comparisons, I think this is Steve Smith, not a great picture, sorry, but head nice and straight, squatting in the position. That's so they can tell which direction the ball is going in and what trajectory the ball is going in. Obviously, the more you lean your head to the side, the more of a problem you can have. And here's another batsman. I haven't got a clue who it is. Now, I'm only using a little bit of this footage that, again, I must credit Bar TV Sports for. This is the Poland-South Africa test match from a few weeks back. But this is just to show a set, basically, of the South Africa hooker. Now, for the record, before a start, I believe this hooker is an excellent player. That said, if I was coaching him over a more extensive period of time, there's a few things I'd work at, work on, should I say. So we're looking at number nine. Look at how he walks to the, to the ball. He's not looking at the defensive line at all. So that suggests to me there's a predetermined set being carried out from South Africa. He does, however... When he walks to the ball, he does point his body, if you like, to the right side of the screen as we look it. And he's also looking in that direction as well. So if you were taking a punt right now, you'd probably suggest the ball was going to the Polish right. Instead, he switches at the last minute and passes to the left of Poland, his right. So good little hooking play there. Good bit of hooking play from the, from the South African number nine. Once again... We'll look at the pass. What I want you to look for now is how he gets to the next play the ball. So he passes it. He doesn't look at the defensive line, though. All he's doing is looking at his players. And he does that little disguise again. So one of the things in his armory is that he likes to hide which way he's going to pass the ball. And this is one of the reasons I really like I really like him. He from If you were taking a still there, you would think that he was passing the ball to our right as we look at the screen. Instead, he skips out and passes it to our left and his right. And you can't argue with the go forward that South Africa are getting here. So let's watch that again. And let's also take in how he walks the ball. So if I was coaching him and say, mate, you've got to start looking at the defensive line because he's not taking in any information from that defensive line. 
I will talk a little bit more about the dispatch of the ball in a second. Because ultimately, the key thing from watching this hooker is we just need to improve the way he looks up. He does like to disguise his pass. But one of the problems about disguising your pass all the time is if you keep disguising it, then the disguise doesn't work anymore. We're now going to look at the ladies' game, the ladies' World Cup final. I will say here, I don't know if they had a consistent hooker on the field. So one of the reasons that I talk about not calling them the dummy half is that anybody can get to dummy half. So I'm going to say, and I'm just going to guess, and I'm going to speculate that in this game, at the point I've taken, there was no specialist dummy half on the field. And let's have a look at what these players do. So as we look here, our dummy half didn't look up at the New Zealand defence much. She hasn't got much to go at in terms of the markers. They're both in position. But what I want us to focus on here is how she picked the ball up before she delivered it. Let's just look again now. We're going to just see that. Okay, now, watch this. The ball still hasn't been delivered. New Zealand are moving forward. I'll try and pause the tape. No, I didn't pause it very well. But she's picking the ball up a little bit. Let's have a look at her next delivery. No disguise. She's picking the ball up. And look, New Zealand are about a metre off their defensive line. So basically, a dummy half, a hooker, has to get the ball off the deck as quick as they can most of the time. If you do pick it up like this, really you need to be moving forward. And I'll show you some examples of that soon. So this was a bit laboured from the ladies on this occasion. Okay, the opening stanza of the New Zealand and Australia World Cup semi-final. Sometimes as a hooker, you've got to subcontract the ball delivery out. So those community coaches out there in particular don't think that your hooker has to get to every ball. Okay, the cheese. He's only just delivered the ball. Look how early the Australian defence gets up. So I'll just move it back. That delivery should have been straight off the deck. Okay, we're now going to look at how he approaches the ball. Now, I saw him just have a little glance up then. So see how slow he was with his delivery then? And it's not like he's not capable of getting it straight off the deck. But I think that's what should have happened there. And there might have been another meter in it. Again, he's picked the ball up. What he has done, though, is moved forward, to be fair to him. And New Australia are going back. So obviously, we're talking about one of the better hookers in the game. What we can't see from this image is where the cheese is looking. Again, I would argue he was looking a little bit too much at the arse of the play the ball. Not really looking up, which adds to my theory that the Kiwis were a bit too structured. And there's no doubt to me that his delivery is a bit slow on this set and it's costing New Zealand even more metres. We're looking at him now. He's still only looking in the area of the play the ball. He had a bit of a look there. Hopefully you saw that. He looked up to his left. So he is starting to be a little bit aware. Let's see what he might have been looking at. He might have been looking at this disarray here in the Australian line. The only problem he's got is it's the fifth tackle. That was a nice clean delivery. So maybe what he has got is a better left to right pass than a right to left. Now we're going to look at the Australian side of the ball. Um, Cameron Munster, great delivery actually from dummy half. So this is why this is a skill for every single player to practice. This is Ben Hunt now. Ben Hunt was never a specialist hooker. He's moved into that position lately and you can tell he's still got some things to work on his game. But in fairness, he does move forward with the ball, which is good when he delivers it. But New Zealand are still in his face a little bit. It'd be interesting to compare that with Harry Grant when Harry Grant comes on a bit later in this clip. Picture perfect there, Ben Hunt. He decoyed as if he was going to go to the open side. He can see that some New Zealand players are stuck at the marker area. Look at three there in the area. I think there's a fourth in behind. So the New Zealand defence line is really short, and they are short in particular on the short side. And he picks it perfectly by running the football. Probably a hooker with a little bit more pace would have had more joy. Now it looks like Harry Grant is on. Let's have a look at Harry. Look at where Harry's eyes are. He's looking at the defence. And there's no doubt playing for Queensland and playing for Australia, Harry, Harry 
Grant does add a lot more to the hooking role. He's having a good look. He knows where the ball is. He knows where his teammates are. All his eyes were spent looking. All his time was spent looking with his eyes at the defensive line. Watch again. Watch again. This is lots better from Harry Grant. The other thing, one of the key things that Harry Grant does a lot is he walks to the ball. But when you walk to the ball, you actually get more time to make your decision. Obviously, he had to get a little bit of a jog on there because the play the ball was a bit further away. But he didn't rush. He didn't panic. He rolls out a little bit because his team is going forward. Now, how can we talk about hookers without talking about possibly the greatest of them all, Cameron Smith? I had some great footage for you. But unfortunately, the NRL put a block on showing the video. They have the rights to it and do not want to have that footage shared by other people. I found some great clips. Let me, t let me describe to you, though, what Cameron Smith was so good at. Number one, he used to be nice and calm walking towards the ball. Number two, he would look up and take in all the information. Number three, during a set of six, sometimes he'd show the way he was going to pass. Other times he would disguise where he was going to pass, and he was so good at that disguise. Number four, when he rolled out, he didn't roll out when he shouldn't have rolled out. He rolled out when his team were going forward, and he just did a tiny bit sometimes just to engage a marker, didn't go overboard. And everybody was with him all the time, particularly if you think about the role that Cooper Cronk and Billy Slater played in his life too. He could also kick a ball from dummy half. There was a, a clip from the 2017 grand final that I had for you where he kicked from uh, the 40 metre line. And he was so good at subterfuge. He was so good at disguising where he was going to go. He literally played the game from that area of the field. So I can't show you footage of him, unfortunately. Um, I did find some others that I possibly could have used during uh, his Australia days, but the quality of it just wasn't good enough. So to settle on all the things that we've discussed, number one, walk to the ball, taking the information. Number two, getting a nice crouch. So if you're approaching the ball and you're passing it to your right, it's best to put your left foot right next to the ball. So imagine your left foot nice and square right next to the ball and then go heel to toe on your right foot. So if you're passing the ball to your right, left foot nice and close to the ball, heel to toe on your right. You're squatted down and your head and your eyes are square, preferably your shoulders as well. What Cameron Smith was so good at and Harry Grant was quite good at too is disguising where you pass. I always think in a set of six, have a couple of plays where you just send it straight off the deck, let them know exactly where you're going to, and then throw in a couple of disguises just to keep them keep them guessing all the time at dummy half. Hope you've enjoyed that. Next week, it's the second rowers. Send in your favourites and we'll see what we can do. See ya.